in this video we are going to uh, explain what are the types of topical preparations for application onto the skin. We'll see the classification, the types that we have and how to prepare a specific um, formulation which is called paste. Um, first we can classify the dosage forms for topical application uh, according to their physical state. So we have uh, those that are liquid that can be one phase systems, either hydrophilic or lipophilic, and they can also be solutions or micellar systems or microemulsions. Then we also have the two phase systems, which are liquid emulsions, and they can be either of external aqueous phase, so more hydrophilic, or of external um, oily phase, so more lipophilic. Then we also have the semi-solid and solid formulations. Here we have in this slide an example from the Spanish national formulary of a lotion. Here we have uh, the so-called calamine lotion, which follows a, a formula for 100 milliliter, in which we can find calamine and uh, zinc oxide, which are in this case the APIs, and as excipients we have glycerol, bentonite magma and purified water. Glycerol, in this case, will work as a plasticizer or hygroscopic agent. We also have the bentonite magma, which is, in this case, uh, the material used to increase viscosity. And uh, pure water could be the aqueous vehicle. So in this case, we can see that this uh, example is a um, um, lotion of um, suspended solids in water, so hydrophilic. If we go to the semi-solid group, this is the um, most widely used one because there is a very wide variety of different formulations we can find. We also find here one-phase systems, which can be also hydrophilic or lipophilic. We have two-phase systems, which are also called creams, and they can also be hydrophilic or lipophilic, and we have the pastes. In the one-phase systems, we can call um, those uh, that are um, made of lipophilic or hydrophilic excipients, they are normally called ointments. If they are hydrophilic, they are mainly made out of uh, polyethylene glycols or macrogols. And if they are lipophilic, uh, they are made of different excipients that we will see in the next video. Um, we also have the so-called absorbent ointments, which are those that incorporate a surfactant and therefore are able to stabilize low amounts of water or absorb low amounts of water. We also have uh, the so-called gels, which can be hydrophilic or lipophilic and are mainly made of uh, 70 to 90% uh, of water or an oil and a substance that increases the viscosity to make a semi-solid formulation. Um, the two-phase systems are uh, the so-called creams and they can be hydrophilic if they are uh, oil in water um, systems or lipophilic if they are water in oil systems. And finally we have the so-called pastes. Pastes are uh, not classified in any of uh, the other two um, groups because they are a bit different. They are made of a high amount of a solid substance dispersed either in a hydrophilic or lipophilic medium. Um, regarding the semi-solid dosage forms for topical uh, administrations, we normally follow this uh, schema that we can see in this slide. In the left column we have the excipient type and in the right column we wrote the excipient's nomenclature. So if we start by the highest lipophilicity, the most hydrophobic excipients, they can be used directly to put an API inside and uh, directly onto the skin of the patient. And in this case, they are called hydrophobic ointments. If we uh, go a bit down and increase the hydrophobicity of the systems, we can do that, including a water in oil surfactant to produce an absorption base. Absorption bases can be applied directly onto the skin of the patient and then we call them water absorbing ointments. Of course, before application we include as well an API. Also, the absorption bases can be used to add an aqueous phase to them 
And in this case, we have a two-phase system called hydrophobic cream. Also, if we add uh, an oil and water surfactant to the absorption base or directly to the hydrophobic excipient, we have what we call emulsion base. Emulsion bases are never used directly to the skin of the patient, and they are always used to prepare hydrophilic creams by addition of an aqueous phase and, of course, the APIs. If we go a bit down, uh, then we have the completely hydrophilic excipients. And here we have two types of excipients. We have the hydrophobic, hydrophilic ointment, sorry, and also the gels, which are really um, hydrophilic systems that can uh, not only um, uh, be used as vehicles for APIs, but they can also dehydrate a little bit the skin of the patient. So we have to always select adequately the excipient for the semi-solid formulation. Um, then if we uh, go to the paste groups, as uh, we highlighted before, they are systems that contain a solid phase in high proportion, either in an oily or, an, or in an aqueous excipient. They are uh, normally used to treat dermatologic conditions that normally present inflammation with or without bleeding. Normally, uh, we have two types of paste. As we can see in the photograph, they look very, um, they are semi-solid, but they are uh, quite viscous and they can be either oily or aqueous. And the percentage of the solid dispersed in this system is about 40 to 50 percent. So they uh, are highly hygroscopic and uh, they are dispersed in one or more liquid excipients. Therefore, in the end, we have this uh, viscous semi-solid formulation. In this slide, we can see an example of one of the national formularies uh, pastes, which is called Pasta Lazar. It's an only paste, and the formula for 100 gram is uh, uh, made by zinc oxide and rice starch at the same amount, which are the active principles and also the solids and as we can see, they are in a 50% amount of the total amount of the formulation. They are the actives, they are the solid components, and therefore the hygroscopic agents that are useful to treat this kind of conditions. The excipient use is uh, solid paraffin up to 100 gram. In this case, it's a fatty excipient that can also be called Vaseline or petroleum jelly. In this video uh, of this slide, we are going to see how uh, uh, this kind of uh, formulation is prepared. And as you can see, we can find all the materials needed um, for the preparation of the formula. We have the mortar, we have the spatulas, and the two solids that have been weighted. We are going to mix them. in the mortar and also we will reduce the particle size by application of pressure with the pestle. After that, we add the previously heated up Vaseline, which is now in liquid state. It's added directly to the powder and mix to produce an homogeneous paste as it can be observed in the video right now. When the uh, Vaseline starts uh, being, becoming solid again, then the formula increases its viscosity very much. Afterwards, we can use um, the refinery to uh, reduce the particle size of uh, the suspended material. And then the formulation could be prepared for packaging and labeling and further dispense it. To the patient. Finally, in the classification of all these formulations for topical application, we also have some solid formulas that we are not going to prepare in the lab, but we have to learn them as well. They can be either a mixture of powders or also in a form of bars.